Jesus said, Matthew 5, 38, I know you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, resist ye not evil, but whosoever shall strike thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other cheek also. Now that sounds like a Jesus of love to me. The Jesus we all love. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Now, I like that. Now, we talk about love, and we talk about turning the other cheek. We have a good example here today. Brother Dean's with us today. Hasn't been here in a year or so. It's awfully nice to see you again, brother. For those of you who do not know Brother Dean, he used to be a quite a heavy drinker. Is that right? <laughs> When he met his wife, Pauline, in fact, the way he met his wife, Pauline, he was driving through town one day drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Jumped the curb, hit Pauline's mailbox, two before, hit her across the jaw and broke her cheek. <laughs> now, the way I see it, she only had two choices. One, turn the other cheek, take a chance on it getting broken. <laughs> or snap him like a twig, and I think she could have done it. <laughs> but what did she do? She showed him love. She took him in and showed him love. Amen. And what did she get for it? Three of the most beautiful children in the world. Four? Well, congratulations, <laughs> Brother Dean. See now why you haven't been in church lately. <laughs> of course, the other side of that coin, I was in Madison County preaching. I heard a story about a man came in late one night after gambling all night long, lost every bit of his week's paycheck. Well, his wife had had just about all of that she was going to take. And she hauled off and hit him as hard as she could hit him. And what did he do? He had the same choices Pauline did. Did he turn the other cheek? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Knocked her across the room. Now, what did he get for that? A divorce and two years in jail. And what did she get? 150 acres of the best bottom land in the county. And last I heard, she was off with a man that won the money from him in the poker game in the first place. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Amen. Now, you know, we all have our fights. We all fight in our own ways. But our fight is not with man. Our fight is with the devil. Am I right? Amen. Now, the devil, you got to be careful of. He'll sneak up on you when you're least expecting. He'll jump up, and he'll grab you, and he'll tear at you. He'll try to take you down with him. But you got to fight back. It's the only way you're going to beat the old devil. Right. The way to fight him is you've got to get right down in his face. Say, devil, you ain't getting this soul. Now that fight. Is that right, boy? Amen. Now what we all need to do is strive to be a lot more godlike. Now, Brother Hofelt, you strive to be more godlike, don't you? Oh, do to do, Matthew. That's right. Good. I need you to help me show something up here, Brother Hofelt. I want to show the people how the Lord works. Now, Brother Hofelt, let me ask you something. And you answer me truthfully. If I should draw back and hit you, could you turn the other cheek to me? Why, Matthew, I can't answer a question like that. Well, Brother Hofelter, I have an answer for you. I want you to smite me on the right cheek. Well, smite me, Brother Hofelter. There was a time when you gladly smoked me with a beer bottle, as I remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Matthew. It was. And we were young. That's true. And children of the devil. We stand here in the name of the Lord, and I want you to smite me. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. You mean it, Matthew? In the name of the Lord, smite me, Claude. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Matthew? No, Claude. Love lifted me. Amen. Love lifted me. Amen. I'll say this. You got the power of the Lord in your arm, Claude. <laughs> kind of expected on the right cheek, though, Claude. If you don't mind, I think we'll ask Brother Toombs to lead us in the benediction. <laughs> the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you so much. Good sermon, Reverend. Brother Adams, nice to see you in church again. Real fine sermon, preacher. We enjoyed it. Uh, had us worried a little, though. Why didn't you eat him back, preacher? Because, son, that's exactly what I was preaching. Turn the other cheek. I would have knocked his block off. He didn't learn very much, did he? <laughs> Thank you. You look just like my mother. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your help. Good sermon. You like that for us? Thank you. stood one single time to prove the county wrong his mama named him Tommy but folks just called him yellow but something always told me they were reading Tommy wrong he was only 10 years old when his daddy died in prison I looked after Tommy Cause he was my brother's son I still recall the final words My brother said to Tommy Son, my life is over But yours has just begun Promise me, son, not to do the things I've done Walk away from trouble if you can now, It won't be Turn the other cheek I hope you're old enough To understand Son, you don't have to fight To be a man Tommy, let me out over here, will you? I thought we'd go home And get ready for the Christmas carnival I'll meet you there. You and your mom can take care of things till I get there, can't you? Folks will be expecting you to run the cakewalk, like always. I'll be there, Emma. Just need to look in on Brother Simmons. He's been feeling kind of poorly lately. Likely as not, he's come down with something. Since I wasn't in church this morning, this will perk him right up. Uncle Matt, you want us to wait for you? It's a long walk up to the Grinch Hall. No, I'll catch a ride. I'll just meet you there. Mr. Simmons did leave work early on Friday. pretty this morning, Brother Simmons. That's Becky Wagner, isn't it? Yeah. She's Jimmy Joe's girl. I really don't know her that well. You two been in the same class since the first grade. What do you mean you don't? You like her, don't you? After we load up the food and all, you think we ought to stop back by Mr. Simmons, pick up Uncle Matt? Ed Simmons is going to have a sore belly for a long time if he's waiting for your Uncle Matt to come to him.
whatever it takes to win. Right. 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 Jimmy Joe. Okay. Let's be fair. We'll share the prize. <laughs> hey, Tommy. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, 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 Tommy, sometimes I just wish that you'd fight back. You know what I wish? What? I wish we would have won that contest. This cake's good. Here, try it. May I have your attention, please? I have a few announcements. You are impossible. <laughs> I wish to thank Ben Stewart and There's Wayne Uncle Jackson Matthew. Cake walk's going to be starting soon. Tommy. We got another chance. And thanks to the top notch lumber company, these hardware store, Two Ruby's Luncheonette. And thanks, of course, to Hayden Lowry for these beautiful Christmas cakes which he's made us again. And now it's time for the cake walk. Will you look? Can I have your attention up here, please? Can I have your attention up here, please? What is it, preacher? Taking a collection? Yeah. <laughs> Will you hold on, Lim Gatlin? I've got a very important announcement to make here. I know we all came here to have a good time, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. The Japanese have just bombed an American naval base in Hawaii called Pearl Harbor. Does that mean we're going to have to go to war? I don't know what this means, but I do know one thing. We're all going to be forced to make some very serious decisions very quickly. Tommy, what are we going to do? I don't know. I'm going to go. I want everyone to go home, stay calm, stay close to your radio, and for God's sake, pray. To the West Virginia's in Pearl Harbor. Bill Tucker's on it. Okay, boys, I'm signing up first thing in the morning. Who's coming with you? I'll come with you. You can count on me. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory.
Send it to you. Jimmy Joe. And I'm gonna put your picture up too. I bet you I got the prettiest girl in the outfit. Jimmy Joe, I'm not your girl. Jimmy Joe. Now what are you telling me? The same thing I've been trying to tell you for a long time. At a time like this? Now you are my girl. You have always been my girl, and everybody knows that. Telling everybody doesn't make it so. You are my girl. Now, I'll only be gone at boot camp for eight weeks. So I don't want you seeing anybody while I'm gone. No, Jimmy, please. No, stop in things like this, OK? This is not the end, Becky. And you can bet on that. quiet. I have asked Matthew Spencer if he would say a prayer on behalf of our boys going to basic training. Matthew? Seems mighty funny to me that the preacher who's offering up the prayer to our boys that are going away to fight has his nephew living at home with his mommy. <laughs> would you mind bowing your heads in prayer for a moment, please? We thank the most heavenly Father for this opportunity to come together to say goodbye to our boys who are off to basic training. Take care of them, look after them, train them well so that they might defend this country that we love so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All men, all the bus. Hey, Tommy, what are you doing here with the men? Take care of my girl, Paul. Make sure that nobody comes near her. Don't worry, Jimmy. We'll take care of her real good for you. You guys looking out after each other, Jimmy. Remember your brothers. Get tough. Take care, simple. Take care, simple. You get me. Get tough now. <laughs> All right, knock it off, you meatheads. As of right now, you're in the United States Army, and I expect you to act like soldiers. Sound off when I call your name. Carver, Joseph. Here. Don, Albert. Here. Gatlin, James, Joseph. You. Luke. Here. Next time you lay eyes on Tommy Spencer, he better find a hole to crawl in. He always does. Did I tell you to talk, mister? No, sir. Then don't. Yes, sir. Knowles, Benjamin! Here. You know, Tommy, I brought you along for companionship. You haven't said a word all morning. I'm sorry, Uncle Man. I was just thinking. What happened to my pa? Well, you know what happened to your pa? Everybody does. Yeah, um... Did he have a mean streak, or was it just something that happened? Oh, I had no more of a mean streak in him than I do, Tommy. Well, he died in prison. You ended up a preacher. You know, when I was 10 years old, my mother took me to see a traveling preacher. Boy, he could preach that hellfire and brimstone unlike anything I've ever seen. I'm not sure at 10 years old I knew what he was talking about, but the people responded. Tommy, they'd have jumped off this bridge if he had asked him to. I think that man changed my life. Well, you were a hellraiser just like my pa. <laughs> I was a hellraiser. Till the day your pa went to prison. And when I promised him I'd look after you, I realized I had to start looking after myself, too. I guess promises are a lot easier to make than they are to keep. But it's not just that I made a promise to my father. I really believe that fighting's not the way. And it just makes me sick to think that the whole world's fighting. But it is. 
So what am I supposed to do? I don't have an answer for that, Tommy. But you know, I think your problems are a lot like that old tree stump you've been wrestling with. If you work at it a little bit every day, sooner or later it won't be there to be in your way. Him carrying lumber to build the volunteer roster? It doesn't seem right to me. I wonder what he told the draft board to keep from going. Well, maybe he told him he was a girl. <laughs> I mean, we all seen him driving like one. <laughs> yeah, I think he's starting to look like one, too. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. Mr. Henderson said anything you wanted. on your last leg. You got enough to eat? Yep. Let me see this. That's just what I suspected. You really ought to start eating right, you know. You're too young to die. I will. You hurt your mama's feelings when you don't eat the food she fixes for you. And I care way too much about your mom to let you hurt her feelings. Get home this evening. Make sure you get a good supper. Well, I'm not gonna go home. I volunteered for night work at the parachute factory. Why would you do a fool thing like that when it's hard and as dangerous as this job is? What do you need two jobs for anyway? Well, I just felt I ought to. Hard work is a virtuous attribute. Too much of it gets in the way of living. Boy, your age ought to be out having a good time. Shooting a little pool, chasing some of those pretty girls. <laughs> It's not what you preach at church. I didn't say anything about catching him. I just said chase him. We got everybody here, Charlie? I don't know what to sent you up here for anyway. I just got hired on for night work. Mr. Woodward said you could tell me what I could do. He did, huh? He also expects me to turn this sock factory into a parachute plant. Well, I'm here to help. Help what? All I got is a bunch of women and old codgers. <laughs> you gonna help? How come you don't go help fight the war where you belong? What's wrong with you anyway? You got flat feet or cold feet? Neither one, sir. Yeah. Get this thread to the women. And be sure that they don't run out. Because those machines are real tough to set up that they go down. Hey, Mrs. Oh, 
antelope, Tommy. I'll be right back, okay? That'll be fine. Can I help you? Yeah, yes. Do you, do you have any aspirin? Sure do. What size? Oh, sure she will. Regular. I want to sing loud Regular. Sixteen cents. Oh, um, that's that's not the brand I wanted. Well, what brand do you want? We have all brands. Um, that's okay. My my headache's gone. Hold up, wait a minute. I think there's been a mix-up. I think, um, I have your magazine. You must have mine. I don't think so. Oh. How'd that happen? Got me. So how have you been? Oh, fine. Just fine. You know, I'm sorry about what happened that day at the carnival. Jimmy Joe was awful. It's okay. <clears throat> Was that you that ran up on those grain sacks the other day? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Some guy, he uh, just wasn't watching where he was going. Oh, I had to yeah. swerve to miss him. <laughs> you know, it's almost lunchtime. Oh, don't let me keep you. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I, I was going to say that the, the, the uh, cafe is right down the street, and I thought maybe, um, you know, we could... <laughs> We could get a bite to eat. <laughs> sure. Let's go. <laughs> sure, I remember that was the craziest Halloween I ever had. Well, how do you think it was for me? My truck broke down, and I had to walk there all the way in the rain. <laughs> you look so awful. Sure I did. <laughs> all the coloring came out of my paper mache. It turned my skin orange. You're the sorriest looking pumpkin this Kelly's ever seen. I won first prize. Yeah, but Miss Quigley thought you were supposed to be a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Jimmy Joe got so mad because he thought for sure he was going to win. What do you hear from him? Not much. Uh, thought you were supposed to be his girl, didn't he write? Well, he writes me, but I don't write him. You see, I'm not his girl. That's what he tried to make everybody think, but I'm not. What kind of pie are we gonna have this afternoon? Oh, I think I'll have pumpkin. <laughs> so will I.
You're late. I was about to take your mother home myself. Got a little held up. Is it something wrong with the Buick? Putting her away for the duration. Old man Henderson has got a C sticker, but the Ford gets better mileage. Oh. He'll sell this Buick for twice the price when the war's over. Yeah, I guess if there's a dollar line around, Mr. Henderson will figure out a way to pick it up, huh? That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. How's Miss Becky doing? Just fine. <laughs> yeah, Ralph asked about her. Is, is Ralph home from college? Yeah, come in last night. He joined the Navy. Said he was going to finish up school when the war was over. Miss Henderson just about had a hissy. Guess it's a good thing they made the volunteer roster as big as they did, huh? Yeah, I reckon. My nephew's going in. Every young man's got to have his war, I suppose. Part of the human condition. Oh, I had mine all right. Never told you about that. No. A damn German whiz bang got both my ears. Part of my brain, too, I reckon. Why well, couldn't stand up straight for a full year? Sometime late at night, I can hear them whizzing and banging and raising all manner of hell. But I don't hear the birds sing. And I ain't heard thunder in over 20 years. Over there, over there, the Yanks are coming. Why in the hell do we have to do this all over again? You know, the, the draft board says I don't have to go because um, you know, I'm being the only son and taking care of my mom and all that. Do you think I ought to enlist? Oh, nobody can tell anyone what to do, Tommy. You know that. Mr. Jefferson used to say to me, car wash, the most important thing in the world is what a man thinks of himself. Not what anyone else thinks. Why, well, that'll just clutter up his head. <laughs> uh, which Mr. Jefferson might that have been? Why, that'd be Mr. Thomas Jefferson, of course. Of course. He'd sit out on the porch there at Monticello, and I'd bring his rig around. He'd say to me, car wash, if people don't quit telling me what they think, I ain't gonna have time to write this here constitution. <laughs> oh, Tommy, you're here. Good. Yep. See you later, car wash. All right, son. Tom, what are you doing? Oh, Flora couldn't get the laundry finished today, so I'm taking it home. With Ralph here, there's extra meals and all. Bye, car wash. Bye, ma'am. Mama, you got no call doing this. Washing the Henderson's dirty underwear. It's honest work. It's just a favor. Besides, Mrs. Henderson pays fair, and it helps out. She's been good to us. Mama, I should be the one that's taking care of us. You, you should be taking care of the farm instead of working two jobs. I will, Mama. Let's go. I'm glad the mill's closed on Saturday night. I hear this is a really good picture. Yeah, it is. I just wish I'd get some newer pictures here. Like what? Uh, well, I hear they got uh, King's Row over in Charleston. Joan Henderson saw King's Row. Really? Yeah, but she said it was horrible when Ronald Reagan loses his legs. Well, I like pictures when they're real. You know? That's real life. Not me. I like Walt Disney movies. Really? Infantage is the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Somebody ought to teach you some manners, Paul Gatlin. Oh, yeah? Well, somebody ought to teach this creep some manners. Splashing mud on folks. Your mother'd like to see you, I expect. Chewing tobacco and acting like trash. And my brother'd like to see you hanging around with old Yellow Belly here. Come on, Becky, let's go. Hey, where's hey, your hurry, Tommy? Okay. Have a cut of tobacco. No, thank you. Oh, go ahead. Come on, try it. I said no thanks. Hey, look out, Paul. He's turning pale. I think he's liable to throw up on you. You know, now. Now, he ain't pale. <laughs> now, that there's his natural color. Ain't it, Tommy? Yellow. <laughs> you know, you should not be out with Jimmy Joe's girl. Especially with him away to fin in the country and all. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Joe ain't got nothing to worry about. Look at him. He ain't no man. <laughs> so maybe we Come ought on, to just find him down and see what kind of a man he is. Yeah, let's de pants him. Oh, Come on, grab his arm now while I get his bail. <laughs> Hold on, boys. Knock it off. Let him up. <laughs> What are you boys doing? nothing to do with you, preacher. 
<laughs> you know, foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. The rod of correction shall drive it far from it. <laughs> you use a good book for your own purposes. <laughs> My yeah. pa says that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll see you in church, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Say a prayer for us, preacher man. Yeah, right. <laughs> you too, Mr. Jones. Mostly sorry about that, Uncle Matt. Don't worry about it, son. It's just horseplay. But you go on upstairs and get cleaned up. You don't want to keep the young lady waiting any longer. Those boys are always into something. So why does he take it? He's keeping a promise, Becky. Yeah, I know. Just wish for once he'd knock him flat. You know, his father killed a man. It was a fair fight. The jury paid no attention to that. Being locked up that long, I think that's what killed him. Something like that can change a boy's whole life. But it's not only tonight, they're always picking on him. But you know, a flock of crows could take an eagle down. Don't make the eagle any less. He said it pretty tough, you know. Okay, Becky, I'm ready. Uncle Matt, you want to go to the movies with us? No, thanks, Tommy. You see, I'm taking up a collection upstairs for the church robe fund. In the pool? Seems Brother Thomas slept through my sermon about the evils of gambling. He's donated $3 already. <laughs> oh. Kids, have a good time. <laughs> good night. night. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, I just clunked my head on the steps. Uh, look, we don't have to go to the movies. Come on, Tommy, forget about them. Oh, it's not them. I can take that. It's, uh... It's me. It's Uncle Matt fighting my fights. Tommy. Sure, I'm glad he showed up when he did, though. <laughs> I really like you. Uh, well, the whole town still thinks you're Jimmy Joe's girl. I already told you I'm not. Well, it just doesn't feel right, me being here with you while, while Jimmy Joe's off in the army. Well, it wouldn't have made any difference if he was here because I already told him. Besides, you can't live your life to please other people. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. Come on. I don't want to miss the movie. Oh, man. Two, please. German bombs fell across Europe this week as Luftwaffe attacks killed thousands. Axis troops rolled into Russia and crushed local resistance. In France, the Führer's troops goose stepped along the Champs Elysees as thousands of French patriots despaired. German authorities in Paris have announced five executions and the deportation of 100 persons to Eastern Europe because of bombings and other underground assaults on German troops. In Burma, American and British flyers scored their most spectacular victory when they broke up bombing attacks on Rangoon by downing at least 10 Japanese raiders. Good morning, Matthew. Oh, Emma, I'd give thanks to the Lord every day for a week if you'd just make me a pot of coffee. Oh, is that right? I feel like I'm gonna die. I'm afraid I won't. Well, if you're looking for sympathy, you've come to the wrong place. Oh, that's mighty nice of you. Just what's got you in such a bright and cheery mood this morning? Nothing. He's burning about something. I can smell the smoke all the way over here. Doesn't do me a darn bit of good to fix a fine big supper and then sit down and eat it by myself. You were gone all night. Well, now, Emma, preaching is my business. You can't put a clock on it. Folks out there need ministering to. Oh, the whole county knows about your all night ministering. Matthew, if you're going to expect people to keep coming to church on Sunday, you best keep your ministering confined to the needy. That's what I was doing, ministering to the needy. I just bet you were. And I bet she's just lying there smiling this morning. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you act just like a wife. Other times, dang, if I don't think you might like to take up preaching. Oh, listen who's talking. Matthew, when are you going to stop playing at preaching and settle down? If you hadn't married my brother, 
Might have settled down with you. One other thing, Emma. If it was me, I'd either hang them up or take them down. I don't think I'd do both. Dateline, oh! Washington. A total of 1,292 men of the Navy and Marine Corps are being held prisoner by the Japanese. According to reliable sources, Japan has launched heavy air attacks against the Allies' principal naval base in Java. 26 Japanese bombers escorted by fighter planes bomb Surabaya and its surrounding air groups. A communique says, quote, heavy damage has been inflicted. President Roosevelt announced today that the Pacific War Councils of the Allies have established the Combined Chiefs of Staff Board. In Libya, the Germans continue their advances. The situation on their flanks is Enlisted yesterday, and I need someone to help me. You get in the truck, I'll show you what hard work's all about. Enough, boy. Get out of there. You keep up with me. How's he doing, Lamb? 
He ain't got nothing but wood so far. Two hours of work don't show me spit. Well, what's your version of this story? Well, I'm staying awake. I haven't cut off any toes yet. Never got this much work out of Liam Gatlin. He's trying to run you in the ground, you know. <laughs> I think he's doing a pretty good job. You know, Tommy, you don't have to take this. Not from the old man, the boys, any of them. It's all right, Uncle Matt. Even a man of God like myself loses his patience every now and then. I'm OK. You know, man's only got two cheeks. He don't say what to do after that. I'd think about that. I am thinking about it. Has to go on Friday. Gosh, that's a short visit. Oh. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Hi, Ralph. You remember my sister Joanne? Oh, sure. How you doing, Joanne? Hello. Ralph's invited us all to the Daniel Boone for lunch. Oh, I don't think so. I got a lot of work to do back at the house. But you go, Becky. Please come, Tommy. Take at least one day off. Well, you know I can't. Sunday's the only day I get some work done around the farm. Ever been to the Daniel Boone? It's very nice. No, I haven't. Well, if he doesn't want to go. Hey, Tommy, if it's the money, don't worry about it. My treat. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's, um, I really do have a lot of work to do around the house. But you guys go and have a good time. And thank you. Thank huh? you. OK. Becky, see you later. I wish you'd change your mind. <laughs> Thanks anyway, Ralph. Maybe some other time. You name it. Thanks. Hi, Miss Spencer. Hi, Becky. Ralph. Tommy said you were going on down to the Daniel Boone with the rest of them. Well, I decided not to go. Where is Tommy? He's out and back there wrestling with that big old tree stump again. You go on back. Here, let me take your coat. Thank take you. It. Isn't that pretty? He's going to be glad to see you. Me too. I thought you were going to the Daniel Boone. Changed my mind. I wanted to be with you. Oh. Huh. Really? All right. Come here.
How's your mom, Tommy? Just fine, Mr. Adams. And your Uncle Matthew? Same as always. <laughs> he sure does sell that fire and brimstone, don't he? Hey, the second corps is in Africa. Isn't that where Jimmy and the boys are heading after basic? Yeah. They'll get to come home once before they go overseas, so. Huh? How are things going out at the mill, Tommy? Just fine. Oh, there, Jess. How you doing, Mr. How you doing, boy? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, too. How you doing, Jess? Fine, good to Charles. see you, boy. Great to see you, sir. You're looking good. Thank you. It's been quite a while. <laughs> Come right on over here and have a seat. No, I just came by to say hello. As you can see, the Army's already given me a pretty good haircut. Now, listen, we've been taking care of you since you were two years old. We'll tell you when you need a haircut, and you sit down right there. <laughs> Besides, it's free to any man in the service. Well, thank you, Mr. Adams. I appreciate that. How you doing, Tommy? Hey, Jess. That'll be uh, 50 cents, Tommy. Yes, sir. Hey, Jess, didn't I hear your pa say you're going overseas soon? Yes, sir, I'm going in a couple weeks. Yeah, not so. Jess, it's really good to see you, boy. We're proud of you. We really are. Looking good, isn't he? How about this here? Two weeks figure that we're all What the hell are you doing out here anyway, boy? I had a little accident. Mama fretting over you, you're working too hard, you ain't eating right, and look at this mess. Well, you tell her not to fret. I'll be home in a little while. I ain't gonna drive off and leave you, son. Oh, don't do that. What are you doing? Working. Working's supposed to be good for a man's soul. Of course, if that was the case, yours would be as big as all outdoors. <sighs> I get a lot of thinking done while I'm working. Thinking, huh? Yep. Mr. Webster was about the most powerful man I ever knew for thinking. Gawash, he said, 
Thinking is just about the finest thing that a man can do. <laughs> Mr. Webster, huh? Well, Mr. Daniel Webster, of course. He wrote right in his dictionary. Worrying is about as useful as hitching up a 20-mule team to pull down the mountain. Well, I thought you was gonna help me pick up this number, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. How's your mother? Fine, Miss Worthington. Hey there, Tommy boy. I heard you finally signed up. What are you talking about? Paul said your name's going up on the volunteer roster. In fact, he's putting it there himself right now. What the heck do you think you're doing? Hey, hold on, Tommy. There's nothing to get excited about. We just wanted the town to know how we really feel about you. Here's your color. <laughs> it sure fits him. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Look out now, Paul. He's going to get you some of that bump, Paul. Hey, you can watch out, Paul. Come on. He's coming, boy. What's the rest? Coming. I don't think I can take it anymore, Mama. Mm, Move, Paul. cow. Paul Gatlin and his buddies. You can't let them get to you, Tommy. It's not just them, Mama. It's everybody in this town. The way they look at me and the things they say. And it's getting to Becky, too. Of course, she doesn't say anything like you. She wouldn't. It'd be easier going to war. Now, Tommy, listen to me. You can't just go against your own feelings. Now, if you make a decision, it's got to be for your own reasons, not because you're being pressured by some folks. But maybe they're right, Mom. Well, I don't want you doing something foolish like your daddy did. I got to go. Yeah, you go on now. I'll finish up. Tommy. See you next week. I'm on my way to Logan County for that revival. It's going to be a good one. Matthew. Tommy's talking about enlisting. You know, I'm not sure he should. What are you talking about? I need that boy here. I need him on this farm. You know, and I know that's not the reason. He is a grown man. Don't you feel what he's going through? Matthew, I'm asking you to help me keep him home. So what you want me to do is ask this boy to do something he knows is wrong. Yes. Yes, that is exactly what I want you to do. And you're right, Matthew. This doesn't have anything to do with the farm. I'm scared. I'm frightened to death. I listen to that radio every day, and I hear about boys dying over there. And I don't want that child to die. To die either, Emma. We gotta have faith in the Lord. The Lord? Oh, the Lord? Oh. Sure, it's easy for you, Matthew. If something gets too tough or you don't have the answer, you just dump it off on the Lord. When are you gonna stop hiding behind him? You see, I'm calling on you, Matthew. I'm not calling on the Lord. And I'm gonna be right here to help you. Just not today. I've got folks waiting on me, and I've gotta go. He ain't gonna do nothing till I get back.
Mm. Delicious. Did you make these? With my own little hands. <laughs> Gracie Allen, I just love her. She really tickles my funny bone. Funny bone? <laughs> yeah. Nobody really has a funny bone. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, Becky. <laughs> Becky, don't know you please were stop, Becky. <laughs> I knew I could get you to laugh. <laughs> oh, Becky, Becky, the news is on. Let's on, listen to the news, okay? I said, knock it off. To over 1,292 dead or missing. Tommy. While American troops face overwhelming odds in the Far East, the German army is facing all the advances in Europe. Meantime, in the South Pacific, the Japanese advance down the peninsula of Bataan and have laid siege on the island of Corregidor. American losses are reported heavy. And on the home front, the 100,000 volunteer to join the Navy since December 7th. In I gotta go. Day. Okay. We'll have more news at our regular time. And now back. Tommy. Oh, no thanks, George, but I do need a uh, change for the telephone. Please. How much do you think it'll cost me to call Logan County? Oh, see, see, 60 miles, 45 cents, I expect. Logan County? You don't have no pretty girls in Logan County? That a fact. Mm-hmm. Give us two beers, Georgia Pie. He don't want none. Tommy said he don't want none. Put your teeth in, George. I cannot understand a word you are saying. Two beers, I said. I've got a phone call to make, Violet. You know, Tommy, I never thought you were a dope boy. You sure are all work and no play. Well, I wish I could stay, Violet, but I can't. That'll be 20 cents. Tommy doesn't have to spend his hard-earned money. Put it on our bill. Does your date like you buying beer for other guys? You know, Ralph, you won't mind. Uh. Come on, just one little sip. It'll start your feet moving. I'll, I'll tell you what, Violet, you let me make my phone call and um, I'll come back right away and have that beer with you. Come right back. I promise. Okay. I never knew you to tell a lie, Tommy. Hello? Hello, Uncle Matt. It's Tommy. Tommy, are you okay? I'm fine. Is him all right? Yeah, she's all right. Listen, Uncle Matt, I, I need to talk to you. I'm thinking about enlisting. Enlisting? Now, Tommy, your mother and I have discussed this. If you wait till I get home, we'll all sit down and talk about it. I need to talk to you now, Uncle Matt. I'm sorry, Tommy. What'd you say? I told you. I'm thinking about signing up. Wait till I get back. Well, when's that gonna be? Well, Tommy, the war's not gonna be over in a week. I'll be home in a few days. Where are you calling from? I stopped by the blue room to use the telephone. That's good. You know, Tommy, there's an old saying, give wine unto those that be of heavy heart. You know, they've got beer at the blue room. It's about the same thing. Gladden your heart with beer, my boy. It'll make you feel better. Uncle Matt, that's not going to help. What kind of preacher are you anyway? Sunday sermon is all you're good for because that's just talk. Glad in your heart. Just wish my Paul was still alive. Tommy. Wish to God he was. He'd be here. Tommy. Glad in your heart, Violet.
Gladden your heart. Did I hear you say something about giving wine? Sounds like you're having a pretty tough time. The phone? It's my nephew. He's having a tough time. Well, if you need someone to talk to. You know, I'm just not sure talking would solve the thing, though. Well, maybe it's not talking you need. God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? You sound like a preacher. It's because I am a preacher. Well, I suppose a preacher has feelings and needs like any man. Not a good preacher. No, that might be just what my nephew was trying to tell me. Ralph's gonna be okay. Car wash, take him upstairs, go to bed. Good. Now, come on, get going, get away from here. What are you doing? If his mother saw me out here... Oh, Ralph's mother is a very nice lady. I'm just afraid to wake up the whole house. Now, come on, let's go. Where? Well, we could go back to the Blue Room and pick up some beer. Oh, give wine unto those with a heavy heart and gladden your heart. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Here we go. <laughs> Uncle Matthew has a forgetful nature. God bless him. <laughs> Tommy, you were changing right before my very eyes. <laughs> oh. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O oh, prince's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and the joints of thy thighs are like jewels that are the work of the hands of a cunning workman. I don't understand the <laughs> word you're saying, mm. but I sure am beginning to love. <laughs> it's the Bible. That's the Bible? Mm-hmm. The Song of Solomon. Uncle Matthew is always quoting the Bible. <laughs> Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. No wonder your Uncle Matthew's in such demand mm -hmm. with ammunition right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tommy. Uncle Matt, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be back till next week. You know, Tommy, a lot of things between me and you hadn't been right lately. And so we stopped one of them. We say we get rid of it once and for all. Okay. <laughs> Real glad you're back, Uncle Matt. And uh, what I said on the telephone, I'm sorry. Never need to apologize when you're telling the truth. You know, you're right. I've been laying things on the Lord way too long. You know, I've been getting the feeling he was getting a little tired of it, too. <laughs> you know, Tommy, if you were to enlist, him and I could take care of this place just fine. And what about the promise I made my pa? Well, there's a difference between a barroom brawl and defending your country. I think your pa would understand. What about you and Becky? Oh, well, I'd like to marry her. 
But um, I've been acting pretty stupid lately. Well, Becky's a fine girl. Man's lucky to love one good woman in his life, especially one that loves him back. Have somebody that cares about you is the most important thing in the world. If you want to marry her, sooner or later you're going to have to ask her. I will. I will. You will if we hurry. Yep. <laughs> Picks out of that tree, didn't we? <laughs> Let's go see it. Your hat. I'll leave it. Let's go. Well, don't I even get a welcome? Looks like the whole town's given you a pretty big welcome, don't you think? You did right. No picture, neither. Jimmy, I thought we settled all that before you left. Yeah, but I was hoping maybe you'd change your mind. Jimmy, I'm getting married. To Tommy Spencer. Wednesday night, when I was preparing my text for today's sermon, I decided on the Ten Commandments. And the more I thought about the Ten Commandments, the more it reminded me of a story I heard. The preacher came to church one Sunday. The old deacon said to him, Preacher, what are you preaching on today? The preacher said, You know, deacon, I don't know. I had a sermon all prepared. I got up this morning and somebody had stolen my bicycle. And it was so upsetting to me, I forgot what I was going to preach about. The old deacon said, you know, I think if it was me, preacher, I'd get out there and I'd preach on the Ten Commandments. And when I got to thou shalt not steal, I'd look down on it. I'll tell you one thing. Whoever stole your bicycle, the Lord's going to make them feel guilty. They're going to bring that bicycle back. So the preacher got out there and preached one of the best sermons he's ever preached in his life. And when it was over, he came off and the old deacon said, Preacher, mighty good sermon, very inspiring. But I got to tell you, I was a little disappointed. When you got to Thou Shalt Not Steal, I expected to hear you really hit it. I didn't notice any difference. The preacher said, You know, deacon, I got to Thou Shalt Not Commit Adultery and remembered where I left my bicycle. <laughs> That's a funny story, and I know that. But you know, sometimes funny stories have a way of hitting home. And that one hits way too close to home for me. The Ten Commandments are for everybody, even preachers. 
There's another commandment that says something to the effect that thou shalt not lie. And I've done that. I've lied to you people. I've lied to the people that care the most about me. I've lied to myself. Now, some of you may have seen me out drinking, seen me in places I shouldn't have been, with people I should have never been with. And there's no excuse for that. So until I can straighten out some things in my life and get right with God, I can't be the minister of your church anymore. I'm truly sorry. They'll be sending you, Jimmy Joe. The Pacific, I bet. They say them Japs is all over them islands down there. By the time you get finished, ain't gonna be none left. Hey, it ain't gonna take me as long as it took you two. Huh? I went up and volunteered for the Marines. Hey! <laughs> Little brother's a jarring. You hear that, Jimmy Joe? <laughs> hey, Marine Green. <laughs> Three more days. Three more days? No, we got another week. Yeah. <laughs> Three days, she's getting married. Well, you don't care nothing about that. It ain't worth worrying about. He just stays here. I mean, how'd she take up with him to begin with? I'm off fighting, and he just stays here. Will you forget it? Hey, George, three more beers, huh? It ain't worth thinking about, Jimmy. Becky was my girl. Now, come Sunday, she's marrying him. Let's get out of here. Hey, where are we going, Jimmy Joe, huh? I'm going to take back what's mine.
Wayne, you gonna give me a little something to fight for? A little something to remember you by? Good evening, preacher. How's the army treating you, Jimmy Joe? Fine. Just fine. See you later, man. Well, you knew I always liked you, Jimmy Joe. Is that a fact? Uh-huh. How about a bottle of beer, George? Let's go outside, Gatlin. Now, what do I want to go out in the cold for, Tommy, when I got me a nice, warm girl right here? Go away, Tommy. We're enjoying ourselves. Yeah, get out of here. Get... Go on. Come on, go on. <laughs> Keep going, Yella. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Go on, Yella. Come on, I'm glad you felt up for taking a walk. It's a real pretty day. 
You're looking pretty, too. Do I still look pretty to you? You look beautiful. You'll always look beautiful to me. Becky, it's an unfortunate thing what happened, but it didn't just happen to you alone. It happened to both of us. Oh, Tommy, I felt so awful. I'm so ashamed. Becky, we're gonna get married. Nothing's changed. I'm still who I am, and you're still who you are. And I love you, Becky, more every day. I love you, too. It's all right now. It's all right. You want to enlist, don't you? Yes. Because I have so much here to stand up for and to protect. And I feel I ought to. But Becky, you, you're the most important thing in the world to me. So if you need me here. I want you to do what you have to do. You go on. I'll be here. And I'll make us a home worth fighting for. And after you get back from basic, then we'll get married. Well, I'll have leave in a few weeks. Okay. I can wear my uniform when we get married. <laughs> okay. We may not have much of a honeymoon. I, I might have to leave right after the wedding. Emma! Out here! Did you hear anything about the jury? Sure did. Be a long time before this town has to worry about the Gatlin boys again. Uh... Only took 30 minutes to convict all three of them. Uh... Oh, I wonder if Becky knows. Yeah, I went by and told her on the way over here. She looks good, Emma. She's got fire in her eyes again. You know, she says Tommy writes her regularly from boot camp. Oh, I'm glad that's behind us. How are you feeling? I'm okay. I feel a little awkward sometimes, you know, without my ministering. I did it for so long. But I'm okay. You look beautiful. Were you this nervous on your wedding day? Oh, yes. Every bride is. I, I feel so grown up, like a woman. I always kind of hoped that you and Tommy would get together. I'm so happy to have you as a daughter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Careful now. Oh, I'm sorry. Your mom and I are just about to be seated, but I just had to take a look at you before your daddy came in. Is Tommy here yet? Don't worry, Matthew's gonna pick him up just as soon as the bus gets in. I'm so glad they let us get married before he ships out. A few hours isn't much time for a bride and groom. I know. But it's enough for now. I better get out there. Good luck. Thank you. Proud of you, Tommy. Thank you, sir. Take care of Becky for me? Of course I will. It's the least I can do. I haven't been much of an uncle to you. No, sir, you haven't. 
You've been more like a father. Give him hell, son. Matthew, the deacons say that the church just isn't the same without you. Thank you. Thank you. Crawling was bottled up inside him. He wasn't holding nothing back, he let him have it all. When Tommy left the bar room, not a Gatlin boy was standing. He said, This one's for Becky, as he watched the last one fall. And I heard him say, I promised your dad not to do the things you've done. I'll walk away from trouble when I can Now please don't think I'm weak I didn't turn the other cheek And Papa, I sure hope you understand Sometimes you gotta fight when you're a man Everyone considered him The coward of the county